we meet for day 326 here of the Daily Bread Bible Study for Saturday, November 21st, 2020, focusing on Acts chapters 24 through 26. So even within these three chapters, it's a little bit more condensed because most of it is arguments and kind of repetition of what Paul has already said. So in Acts 24 verse 1, Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a, a certain uh, Tertullus, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. So Paul is currently imprisoned there in Caesarea, and the legal team of the Jewish council arrive. Um, it's kind of funny to note that they go all out here, even an attorney comes, you know, so the idea is that they've got their full legal staff here with them as they are trying to uh, encourage the Romans to uh, put uh, Paul to death. So using flattering words and beseeching language, they make accusations against Paul, namely two things. First, that he is an agitator and a ringleader of a sect that they call the Nazarenes. And second, he is attempting to profane the temple. Paul, in response, speaks, also speaks flattering in a flattering tone to them, refuting the point that he is an agitator and defending his belief in a legitimate interpretation of the Messianic Judaism called the Way. Now, Felix seems to understand the conflict between the Jewish council and the Way, keeping Paul imprisoned but allowing visitors for a few years. Paul continues to evangelize over the, this two-year time span and sees reason, reasonable uh, to conclude that Paul is writing letters uh, to the churches he has started in other parts of the world. This would make sense that it's a good time for him to write to those churches and maybe even some of the writings that we have here in the uh, New Testament were written during this time period. Who knows? Uh, Felix is then replaced as Festus, uh, by Festus as governor, um, over after the end of that two-year period. So in Acts 25, Festus summons the case against Paul, and the chief priest and the leaders of the Jews seek to have Paul transferred to Jerusalem really in hopes to kill him along the way. Now instead, Festus perceives something is up and summons them to the place of his court. The allegations made against Paul appear harsh, but are unable to be proven. And so Paul stands firm in his faith, trusting that the Holy Spirit will enable him to proclaim the gospel, quote, to the ends of the earth, namely, there in Rome, as the vision of Jesus said. So in Acts 25, verse 10, Paul said, I am appealing to the emperor's tribunal. This is where I should be tried. I have done no wrong to the Jews, as you very well know. Now, if I am in the wrong and have committed something for which I deserve to die, I am not trying to escape death. But if there is nothing to... Uh, nothing to their charges against me. No one can turn me over to them. I appeal to the emperor. Then Festus, after he had conferred with his council, replied, You have appealed to the emperor. To the emperor you will go. Festus then speaks about the mystery of this Paul character, wondering why accusations were so severe for a man who seems to be promoting Quote in Acts 25, verse 19, a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Festus gives Paul court with a Roman-appointed representative, King Agrippa, from the line of King Herod. So in a lot of ways, King Herod comes full circle as well, too. Just as Jesus, you know, had running ins with Herod and had to, uh, you know, deal with Herod as a political figure, so Paul has to deal with a Herod as well. This Herod seems a little bit more sympathetic, though. 
In Acts chapter 26, King Herod Agrippa II sits to listen and judge Paul. So, uh, so even so, Paul continues to speak with boldness through the Spirit. Paul again details his past, which we can gloss over, and he, uh, his raising up as a Jew, his participation in what he calls the strictest sect of Judaism, namely the Pharisees. Paul seems crazy, but states the impossible has happened. In Acts 26, verse 8, Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? I mean, this God raised the dead in the Old Testament as well, too, should be noted. But anyways, Paul details his uh, persecutions of the church he now promotes and his vision of Jesus on the road of Damascus. In Acts 26, verse 22, To this day I have had help from God, and so I stand here, testifying both small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place, that the Messiah must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim both to our people and to the Gentiles. So King Agrippa sees the evangelism that is being done. In Acts 26, verse 28, Agrippa said to Paul, Are you so quickly persuading me to become a Christian? And Paul replied, Whether quickly or not, I pray to God that not only you, but also all who are listening to me today might become such as I am except for these chains. King Herod Agrippa II pronounces Paul innocent, but also acknowledges that Paul should be sent to Rome because he requested to appeal to the authority of um, Caesar. This will fulfill the uh, vision of uh, Jesus sending Paul to Rome. And in another working of the Holy Spirit, Paul's prayer for, quote, all who are listening to me today might become such as I am, is more fruitful than he will live to know. For 200 years after he has this um, writing of the book of Acts, we see that uh, Christianity becomes the official religion of the Roman Empire. Now, being connected with the Roman hierarchy, King Herod Agrippa II helps cultivate the seed of Christianity spreading to Rome and throughout our whole world today. Herod is responsible for Christianity. Go figure that. Now, the story is not just something that has happened in the past. But when we speak of Jesus today, we live with the ancient spirit still planting and nourishing seeds in our day. In our time. What an incredible way that the story has manifested itself in our life, in our world. It just has signs that God has been active throughout this whole time period. And God is active in our lives today as well, too. So I hope you find yourself in awe of what God is doing both in the past, in the present, and into the future. And may God be kind and gracious to you this day.